Now it's good to be with you. It's my first time in Monrovia. And as some of you know, my name is Larry Perkins, and I gather with the Christians and meet at the Spring Creek Gospel Hall in suburban Chicago. And I'd like to read in Luke chapter 1 with you. Luke chapter 1. And verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, <clears throat> and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden, or of his servant. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Now, as we mentioned in prayer, um, this conference is about some of the great salvation words, great gospel words, propitiation, justification, sanctification. Um, you know, some people might say, well, you know, why do I need to learn about that? I'm saved. I know I'm saved. And, you know, it's good that if a person knows for sure they're saved, um, I was saved for four years and never knew you could know because of the groups I was with. Never heard about eternal security. But I want to tell you, uh, when the Lord revealed eternal security to me, what a blessing is brought to my life. You can be saved and yet not live in the good of what God wants us to enjoy as believers. Now, I hope there will be many purposes accomplished by looking at these, uh, these words, these subjects. But there's two that I want to look at with you tonight that I hope um, God will accomplish to make us better worshipers and to make us better witnesses. Now, the first one, worshipers. Uh, what an example this young sister Mary is. Now, possibly she was a teenager, but I'll tell you, she was no slouch. She knew God. And she says in verse 49, He that is mighty has done to me great things. Well, the great things the Lord had done for Mary are unique to her. She's going to have the son of the highest, of the most high. But can't you and I say, He that is mighty has done great things? Do we worship, brother, sister? I feel this is a great lack in my own life. You know, it's so easy to be concerned about our circumstances, to look at the failure within. I was just talking to a young brother uh, this week, and um, he says, I just feel so unworthy. I says, I know what you mean. Uh, if it wasn't for the word of God, it would be, you know, be like putting your head in a garbage pail and staying there. But, I mean, realize that we're not worthy, but get into the word and find out we are worthy in Christ. All that we have in the Lord Jesus. So she starts off and says, my soul does magnify the Lord. She's appreciating the greatness of the Lord. And I hope as we look into these gospel words that we'll realize his greatness and what he's done. And then she says in verse 47, my spirit has rejoiced or rejoices in God my Savior. Notice God my Savior, personal. She knew the Lord. Have you rejoiced in the Lord today? Or have things got you down? A lot of things can take us away. You know, Mary didn't have it easy. She didn't. I mean, it's, it seems obvious, even in the next chapter of Luke, that she and Joseph were on the poorer side. And... Uh, 
but she's not moaning the, singing the blues here about this or that or the other. She's enjoying the greatness of our God. And she says in verse 48, the Lord has regarded the low estate, the, the humble status of a servant. Notice that she takes such a low place. And maybe that's part of the secret of giving God the high place when we take the low place. And she says, for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Why? She believed what the angel Gabriel told her. She believed the word of God, that she was going to have the son of the Most High. You know, we can read the word of God. It's another thing to believe it and live in the good of it. For it to get down into our shoe leather, not just our heads. I know we need it in our heads, but we need it in our hearts, don't we? And in our, in our lives. Um, you know, some people say, well, and I, I, have, I remember somebody saying this to me when, before the assembly started up in northern Michigan, uh, when we started to speak about the assembly and the uh, sister's place, the role, and this one sister had been coming out, just gotten saved and was on fire for God. She says, you mean I can't preach? Um, I said, Diane, don't argue with me, <laughs> you know. Take it up with the Lord. You know, some people say, well, what can a sister do? Well, I'll tell you, there's one thing a sister can do, a brother can do. I mean, we may not be able to be missionaries to Timbuktu, but we can worship. Because worship isn't a case of gift. It's really a case of heart. Heart for the Lord. And she's got it. She's enjoying the Lord's mercy, his compassion, his kindness. In verse 50, on people that reverence, have a respectful attitude toward the Lord. She's appreciating his power. Verse 51, he has showed strength with his arm. And really in 51 and 52, it reminds me of what the Lord Jesus said, that those that exalt themselves, God brings down. He, they're going to be abased. And those that humble themselves, they're going to be exalted. And to me, Mary's an example of what she's saying here. She's taking the low place here. She's not exalting herself. But just one more thing about Mary. Um, I mean, it amazes me the grasp she had of God and his plans when, I mean, did she even have a copy of the scriptures in her own language? I mean, in those days, it was before Gutenberg. <laughs> and we've got the New Testament. But notice verse 54. It says, God has helped his servant Israel. She realizes the nation was to serve God. In remembrance of his mercy, God's remembering his, his kindness as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. She realizes that this son that she's going to give birth to, God is keeping his promise that he made to Abraham that through his seed, the whole world would be blessed. What a, what a grasp this girl had. She's a worshiper. He that is mighty has done to me great things. Brother, sister, I hope, I pray, that as the conference unfolds and we look into these words, it won't be just intellectual knowledge. I mean, we need to get a grasp of that, but that'll result in us understanding God's greatness, who he is and what he's done, and there'll be real worship. Okay, look with me now in Jeremiah, please, chapter 45. Jeremiah 45. Dan, I'll take the one on the left, just so you know. And verse 1. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Baruch, 
Thou didst say, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sighing, and I find no rest. Now, talk about singing the blues. He's doing it. And you say, well, he had good reason to. Well, verse 4. Thus shall you say to him, The Lord says thus, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. And seekest thou great things for yourself? Seek them not. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, says the Lord. But thy life will I give unto thee for a prey in all the places whither thou goest. Now here's this man Baruch. From what I understand, he came from a prominent family. And I wonder if he was hoping for a good position in life. Things will go well. But as he's writing what the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, um, because of the nation's idolatry, things were going to go from bad to worse. God was going to let the Babylonians come in, as you know, and uh, it wasn't going to end well. So, yeah, he's singing the blues there. And the Lord says in verse 4, yeah, um, it's not going to turn out well, Baruch, but it's like the Lord puts his finger on something here. Verse 5, are you seeking great things for yourself? Don't do it. Now, Mary was concerned about the great things the Lord has done. She wasn't concerned about great things for her. Apparently, Baruch was. You know, it seems to me, if what we read about Mary, that's about worship, what we read here, there's a warning here. And it's very easy for a human being to want great things for ourselves. But I would suggest this. If we are, we're likely not going to be appreciating the great things the Lord has done as much. We're not going to be appreciating his greatness because we're occupied about our own greatness. And when it comes to witnessing, um, we're not going to be too concerned about people that are just a heartbeat out of out of hell. We're going to be more concerned about building our own kingdom. Now, having said that, I know God blesses people. You think of Joseph in the Old Testament, Daniel in the Old Testament. These men had prominent positions, to say the least. But that's not where their priority was. They were living for God. They weren't seeking great things for themselves. Just God just prospered them. So it's a whole case of priorities. So a warning. The Lord says, see these great things for yourself? Don't do it. You know, to me there's another thought here. God was going to bring destruction on Judah. And he did. And brother, sister, this world is under God's judgment as well. You know, we can make a big kingdom for ourselves, but in a thousand years, what's it going to mean? What are we living for? What am I living for? It's so easy, just the attitude of the world, live for me. The Lord Jesus didn't. I don't think Mary did either. But one more reading, please, in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. <clears throat> In verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, there immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, let me just stop there. I want to read more, but here's a man now. To me, he's at the extreme end of the spectrum when it comes to being in bondage to sin and to Satan. I doubt if any of us have been that far uh, along. 
But, you know, he is a little picture of people under the bondage of sin and Satan. This man needed deliverance. There's only one man who could deliver him, and that's the Lord Jesus. And there's only one man that can deliver people today. Now, this man, I mean, what a life, tormented. I mean, in the place of death, in the tombs, his behavior was uncontrollable. Uh, night and day, uh, crying and cutting himself with stones. You say, well, the people that I deal with aren't like that. I mean, you ask them how they're doing, they're, they say they're fine. Everybody seems to think that life is good. If you had asked me that before I was saved at 25 years old, I was searching. The emptiness in my, and maybe I'll give my testimony tomorrow, the emptiness inside uh, was getting worse and worse. I was a mess. But if you had asked me, how are you doing? A smile would have said I was doing good. This same woman that I talked about earlier, who uh, said, what, I can't preach? Um, she'd been coming out to meetings, and um, we knew she wanted to be saved. And uh, she'd come out and say, you know, how are you doing? Big smile on her face, I'm doing fine. And my heart would sink, you know, I'm hoping she'd come to an end of herself and realize her need for Christ. But what we didn't find out, after she was saved, she said she'd be in the shower crying her eyes out. But, you know, people have a smile on their face. But it doesn't mean that their life isn't empty and dark and needing deliverance just like this man, the Legion. But let's read on here. Verse 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, we're in Mark chapter 5 and verse 6. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, that is, he knelt down in front of him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the demons besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith, immediately Jesus gave them leave or permission. And the unclean spirits went out, entered into the pigs, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the, de the devil. Really, it's him that was demon-possessed and had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was demon-possessed and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship or the boat, he that had been demon-possessed prayed him that he might be with him. Albeit Jesus suffered him not, but says to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So what a change now when the Lord delivers this man from the demons. Um, tormented life, no peace. We read in verse 15, here he is now sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. He's got peace, he's sitting, he's clothed, he's socially acceptable now, he wasn't before. In his right mind, he can think straight. You know, this is what the gospel does. It changes lives. Only the Lord Jesus can do this and his great salvation. Did the man appreciate it? Do you appreciate your salvation? Not as much as we ought to. The man just wants to be with the Lord. 
We read that in verse 18. The older I get, I'm looking forward to being home with the Lord. I don't look forward to dying. I have to leave that with the Lord, let him handle that. But I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to being with this man I've never seen yet, with these eyes. I've known him for almost 50 years now, 49 to be exact. Yes, I'm 74, you got it. But the Lord told this man, go home to your friends, tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and has had compassion on you. You know, people might argue with doctrine. They can't argue with a changed life. I think my wife gets tired when she's with me and I meet somebody and I tell them, you know, how I was saved. I used to play in a band and was into drugs and all this. And, but that's what the Lord's done for me. It's the biggest event in my life, the most important thing. You say, well, I didn't play in a van. I wasn't into drugs. Well, good. <laughs> but are your sins forgiven? Can we not tell people, you know, I know for sure I'm going to be in heaven. I, I've got peace with God. The Lord has left us here, brother, sister, to be witness for him. He's not here now in a body. We're here. He's in us. He wants us to be witnesses. And we need to get a hold of the truths of salvation. Um, I don't have time to go into it, but I mean, I knew so little when the Lord saved me. I was with a cult for the first year. They didn't even believe Jesus died. I found out. But I'm reading the Bible. I was on a commune to help kids get off drugs. And uh, I finally clued in that, you know, there was never anything about repentance. It was just like plug into Jesus and, you know, turn your life around but nothing about sin, and I found out they didn't even believe Jesus died. I just thought he went into a coma. But it was the word of God that showed me that was wrong. And then I was with Pentecostals for three years and never heard about eternal security. And I'll tell you, I, as I did at the beginning, what a blessing that's been to me, just the assurance of salvation. I never knew before you could know for sure you're saved. So all I'm saying is that these truths um, bring tremendous blessing. They enter into the, the fullness of what's involved here. And God's salvation is so great that, you know, these different words show it from different uh, perspectives. But it's not only great blessing to us, but God wants us to share it with others. We're not terminals for all this, Right? Just like the Lord Jesus said, go and tell your friends. And listen, I don't find it any easier than you. Um, time is gone, but let me just say this. Um, really, I'm a coward. I'm a chicken when it comes to the gospel. Um, but in our neighborhood, what I usually do, I trust that the Lord has put on my heart. I get some calendars, and I go around the neighborhood, and I, it gives me a chance to talk to them a little bit. And, uh, but I'm scared to death before I go. And I have to ask the Lord for help. And I'm amazed every year it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Isn't that the way it often is? Yeah. But, um, but when you realize the greatness of God's salvation and the need that people have, even though they may have a smile on their face and it might look like everything's going for them, if we could only see their hearts, and uh, the emptiness in their life. May the Lord help us, brother, sister, as this weeding unfolds, as this weekend unfolds, to be better worshipers, to be better witnesses.